All right, so we're recording. I'm here with my great friend, Laura. Um, so let's get into Java Rays, right? Um, okay. Cool. So uh, can you read out to me, do you have the syntax on hand for a Java array? Um, not, to, not to throw you a curveball okay. right, right from the get-go. Okay, here's a, a statement that declares an array reference variable. Or, okay. oh, it shows an example. Okay, so we would do this. Um, oh, int, mm -hmm. square bracket, mm -hmm. numbers, mm -hmm. semicolon. Okay. And then in the next line, numbers okay. equals new int, mm -hmm. square bracket, and six. Six so, goes inside of the square bracket. Square bracket, perfect. Yes. So, okay. um, the first example is a statement that declares an array reference variable, and then the second one, um, declaring the array reference variable doesn't create an array. The next step is to use a new keyword to create an array, and assign its address to the numbers variable. So that's what we yep. did. Those two steps. Initialize and bind to reference. Got you. So if we were to do a system dot out dot print line here and we're to pass it in numbers, can we do that? Let's see. I've got to wait for for the cold start because it's it's he's got to warm up first. Yeah. Hmm. So it looks like when we try to print a, um, an array as is, it gives us a memory address. But what if we were to tell it we want to print out the first number in numbers? Will it give us that six? Uh, no, it, it just gave you your zero. Cause we haven't, we've just made that six is the size of it, I think. Got you. So initialize but, and bind a reference. But we didn't tell you what, what they were. Size to six. So in this yeah. case, it doesn't look like there is anything inside of numbers just yet, or at least not anything that we intentionally added. So if we wanted to, let's say, put the number three inside of numbers, how could we do so? Um. you would assign you would tell it you want to put it in numbers and you would mm -hmm. assign the location you want to put it mm -hmm. so you want to put it in the first place you would um how does that have look? it yeah so you're putting six in the first spot of yeah, your let me change that to three just so i know it's, it's a unique, unique number right and so if i try and print out numbers index zero you should get a three Yay. Yay. So we needed one, two, three, four lines in order to, this time, because we did it step by step by step. Right. If we in order to print to, a three. Yeah. Yeah. If we wanted to, we could do this all on one line or on have the declaration, the initialization, and the assignment of the number three. We could do that all on one line and then do okay. the print line. So let's try and see what that might look like. Int numbers So um, it's going to balk at me because I'm doing the same name twice. I'm just going to comment out my initial code here. And it looks like I can't pass the number six here. So I just won't. Um, and I want to you know, have there be six spaces in this array. So I can just pass random dummy numbers. Though that seems kind of like a lot of work if I don't want to have to manually describe them, but let's just say I want to have the same exact result. This is one way that I should get the same exact result. That I've defined my array with valid syntax. Right. And it has the number three in the first index. What the other numbers are, I don't really care just yet. 
because I, I haven't told it explicitly otherwise. I wonder if I could actually just have these be empty and not say anything. No, it doesn't look like it's happy, but let me try running that and see if it explodes. So yeah, it's saying yeah. you're not allowed to do that. I mean, I'm allowed not to, do, happy. to just mm -hmm. do three, but then if I want to explicitly say that there were six numbers, that this array should be of length six, if I don't give it six numbers to start with, um, then I'm probably not allowed to do something like this here, where you know I say, hey, I'm gonna give it only the number three, but I'm gonna try and print out index number two. Right. So it should give me an, a warning here or an error, like I'm trying to go out of bounds. Yep, array index out of bounds exception. Let me just make sure that this works also for our initial code. So our initial code, we said that this numbers array is gonna be of length six. We should be able to print out, we should be able to print out index five even. So just give that a run. Yep. And it looks like it initializes all of those numbers, all those in, in, in empty indices with the, the number zero. So if I do, let's say if I do the for loop, um, int i equals zero, i is less than six, i plus plus, and we're just gonna loop over and print out each, I'm already kind of jumping the gun here. No, let's I see what you're doing. I'm gonna try and print out every single element of numbers. So if I do this, should be three and then five zeros. There you go. Mm -hmm. And so, so to do the same thing as above, but uh, um, on one line. Does the same as above, but on one line, okay. So here's a demo of making an array, giving an initial value of some kind, and just one index, and then also reading out all the values. Read out, print all the values in all the arrays. You could say values, you could also say items. Say values. Yeah. So yeah, this is this this is our initial use case here, right? Right. Did you have some other syntax there that you wanted to try at the same time? Um, any syntax that's that stands out to you before we move on to the next thing to try? Um no, I no. That looks um, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, that looks good. We can always come back to this. So we've answered what is a syntax to declare Java array? That is this uh, line three that would just declare an empty array, but with no length or values inside of it. It's just a, an array reference. Um, and then we went over how to initialize an array with data. That would be for example, line four initializes with blank dummy data, which defaults to zero with integers. Uh, with string, it might be an empty string. Um, and then we also manually assigned to the first index, the number three. Um, we have not passed arrays as arguments. I'm sorry, I wrote arguments. Oh, arguments. did we? Mm -hmm. um, we don't have any functions here really yet. So. Yeah, no, we didn't. Did we, how can, can we use a, for loop to fill the array? Yeah. Yes, so we can use a for loop to fill the array. Let's, let's put that down as um, use a for loop to populate an array. So let's say we want the, the numbers in this array to be 
one, two, three, four, five, six. For example, use uh, store the numbers one through six. So we could do that, simply take our for loop from above and we could actually mutate directly and say that each item of numbers is going to be equal to the value of i. But i starts at zero and ends at five. This might not be exactly what we wanted. I'm also going to move this print out just down below so we see the okay. result. So if I run this now, you should see our result is zero through five. Do you see that? Yep. So okay. what could I do instead of saving the numbers zero through five, if I want to change this to save the numbers one through six, what, what is one simple quick change I could do to this code to um, save? Start uh, for i equals zero, have i equals one, like initialize it at one. That is one way, but I'd argue it's not the best way. We okay. know this code is gonna run six times. Here, I'll change i to one. But you'll see if I run this code, it's not going to give us one to six. Oh, it, well, it started at, okay. Started yeah, at what is this three, three. doing here? Do you know why there's yeah. a three here? Because in the previous line, we set our zero as Correct. three. Correct. Yeah. So okay. let me just comment out this three here, for example, say manually set to three set index zero to three, right? Um, even if I don't have the three there, and I comment that out, you'll still see there's a zero there. Okay. Because the zero was the default value there. You. So in order for us to modify the first index of our array, we have to start at zero. Okay. What else could we change? If not um, this line, what other line do we have to change? Numbers, the one below it? Correct. So yeah. this will come in the first time we run this loop. I will be zero. Right. What can we, how can we change zero to save into the first index, the number one? I, mm -hmm. I, pl I plus. I plus. Yeah, I plus plus. I plus plus. Interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Let me try running that. It's a very interesting Ooh. result. I never thought to do that. <laughs> very close. Okay, that didn't work. This um, is off by only one character. Only one thing needs to change now. Oh, plus one. Yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, there might be another way to do this that I'm not aware of but I feel like this is the most direct thing. We're not actually trying to change I Interesting. here. We're trying to yeah. change what are we saving into each element. Oh, okay. So by doing I plus one here, we're not actually changing I. We're just we're getting, using I to derive a new value. Okay. So I'm not mutating I, if that makes any sense. I'm just using yeah. I as a okay. default base. So we know that we want to modify index zero to index five and we're going to save basically what's the index number i plus one so this gives us the numbers one through six this is useful let's say if we're making a six-sided die oh this would be useful you um, got a low battery warning i have a low battery warning or you have a low battery warning no i'm 100 percent, but you got a low battery warning well i mean it, it says oh, you're 32 30 yeah, it was 32. Okay. Oh, but it, I, thank you for telling me about the warning. I am not plugged in. Okay. That's Because, yeah, at good. first I looked at mine, and I'm like, wait, I'm 100. I'm confused. So now yeah, I'm no, like, that's really good green. that you saw that, because I did not see that. Okay. All right, I'm plugging in my computer right now. How unprofessional be if I, we bothered <laughs> to record this for right. the benefit of others. It happened. To everyone. I started recording this morning because you know you you said, hey Abby, you should record. Or I said I should record, and you know, we were like trying to encourage each other. Yes. And then my computer died. So I lost like fortunately only like 10 minutes of recording, but like I'm so frustrated. I know. Well, it's a dress rehearsal. 
Yep, exactly. That's that's a very good way to look at it. Um, one second, I'm almost plugged in here. And think of next question you might have. All right, I think we're all plugged in and ready to roll. Yep, cool. So then we had an extra use case here, which is really good that we added using the for loop. And this would allow us to do mutations as well. And I'm, I think that's what I'd like to do next. Okay. For permission, I will mutate this array. Because they, in the book here, they talk about an enhanced for loop and a traditional for loop. Enhanced for loop versus a traditional for loop. And that's, that's With news to me. With the enhanced for loop, you do not have to be concerned about the size of array. You do not have to create an index variable to hold subscripts. Is that a for each? Mm, or is it a map? There. What's this enhanced for loop? Uh, do you have a syntax for me? Okay. I'm looking. Uh, it looks like, ouch. My guess is it just takes the length of the array from the array. So that way you don't have to specify manually. Here I'm saying explicitly. Right, six. for um, the general format for enhanced for loop is for data type, element variable, semicolon, array, statement, semicolon, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. totally not useful. Um, okay, so here for, and then uh, open parentheses, int, val, mm -hmm. uh, colon, mm -hmm. and then numbers, and then close parentheses. Yeah, no, yeah. You said numbers? Yeah, and then after val is a colon, not a semicolon. Okay. And, and above, it, I forgot to tell you, go int square bracket numbers and then equals curly bracket and then they just gave three numbers. Got you. Know. you. Okay, so I'll make, and then, I'll make and this then, be numbers two. So that then, way we're not going, okay. you're not getting a headache from figuring out which is which. I'm just gonna put in these three numbers, two, four, six. And then you can do uh, system out print um, I'm gonna do numbers two and I'm gonna try and val. You can have yeah. print val, so or numbers two. Yeah. Let's see if I'm getting some errors here. Looks like I may be missing a semicolon somewhere. Let me just try and run this and oops, that's, hmm. uh, it might just be the IntelliSense which is kind of bonking out yeah. a little bit here. Let me try and run that, let me see. No, that's not it. Okay, I'm gonna try running that and see what happens. See if I get a clear error message from the compiler. Okay, so it said exception in main index four out of bounds for length three. So it doesn't look like I'm allowed to use this syntax as is. I may okay. have misread it or misinterpreted it. Can you compare the code I have here on lines 22 okay, I and 23 with what you have? Okay. Or 21, 22, and 23. Okay, 21. Okay, so just try 
system out, print VAL in the okay. parentheses. So you don't need to declare the, yeah, try Oops. that. There we go. Okay, I'll give that a run. Yeah, that was it. So that must be why it's enhanced. Just so we call this the how to use enhanced for loop. Yeah. Okay. So I, I like that. I I'm reading that and say for all the integer values inside of the array numbers too. Which I guess is just a little simpler code. Yeah. Than... I mean, you don't have to explicitly say how long numbers two is. Right. It could be three. It could be 20. Um, it'll take care of that for you. Yeah. Um, you don't declare the size. It just infers the size from whatever mm -hmm, data you mm -hmm. give it. So that looks good. To that's me. the enhancement, apparently. What would be the disadvantage to using this enhanced for loop? Um, you couldn't, could you get the n number by doing the you minus know, my, one thing? You're, it wouldn't, so how would we work. get, how would we know that two is the first index? You know, like how can we say like, for example, Oh, well, I guess two would always be zero. You know, because it's the first one. So the right, but let's say I want to programmatically print out that the first number, the the number at index zero is two. How would I do that programmatically? Here, up here on line eighteen, I can just say uh, at index i the number is. You know, so right. I do index, and I can do plus i plus is plus where if I run it, it may complain to me that I'm mixing strings and but it's not here. It's saying okay. index zero is one. Or it can yeah. say value at index zero is one. How can I do that down here when I don't have an I? No, in their example, they just use like the next value is three, the next value is six, the next value is mm -hmm. four, or nine, so, or whatever. But they don't say they don't they don't match it up to the index value. It might be that there's an advantage here where the traditional for loop lets you talk about the order or the position. Potential, uh, definitely, it's definitely a, 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 a thing you can do. Whereas I don't know if that's definitely something you can do here. So I'll put it here as a question. Okay. How or can I reference oh. the index number using an enhanced for loop? So that's the question. I know that I can do that with the traditional for loop. So that's not yeah, a question. I, it looks like if you need to do that kind of thing, you it says you should use the traditional for loop gotcha. to process your array. Okay. Well, that's so. convenient. So we have an alternate syntax. But so it's also limited here. because mm -hmm. it's convenient. Because it doesn't as a limitation. have an index. Yep. So um, we've been able to, at this point, read out values and add values. Um, by saying by saying add values, I should say is more correct to say we've been able to change the values inside of an array. If we want to actually add a new element, the sixth element, let's say, you know, right now, right now, I'm sorry, seventh. Right now, we have six elements in this array. Can we add a seventh? Is that allowed in JavaScript? In Java? Um, it question might be tricky i think might be tricky may i add new items to arrays I mean, so in you're, java you're changing after the size. they have been yeah because i think you could you can change the values you know if you have a six uh 
element array, you could change the six values a couple different times, but I don't think you can add like a seven. So in other words, change the size. Yeah. Array size. Well, so if without the syntax, without knowing how to add new items to an array in Java, I would simply go to Google. Right. So let's let's do that real quick. Uh, Java add new items or element to array. So let's just see what the first one gives us. So it looks like in this case here, um, they're actually creating a function which takes in an array. Yeah, they said what you do is create a new array that's slightly bigger, you know, mm -hmm. but empty, and then yep. copy your old array yep. into the new one, and then you have one empty space. Mm -hmm. so you do a temporary array that's one element larger than the original. Yeah. So, in other words, the computer, you could so, say the compiler or the computer, is not responsible for, they're, they're not going to give it to you out of the box. You have to know you're going to have to make an, a new array to fit it because arrays right. are um, constant Fixed. in size. Yeah. So we'll answer this question. Answer. So, yeah, I can always make a bigger yes. box and put but, my data in it, but I can't just, I can't just make the original box a little bigger. Can't just add another row or line. length of data entries or size or I should say quantity right when you say length we're talking really about quantity of items um, so let's go ahead and do that let's that's that's another thing we can do let's let's put it here I'm gonna say here um, it's not technically low level strictly, nor is it high level. Um, but let me put it here as what else can you do? You can create a new array in order to, in quotes, increase the size of a of an array which is not big enough to hold more data, right? So let's say we have our six numbers here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we want to add a new number, which would be seven. Our array is a fixed size of six. So we'd actually have to go and use something like this code here. I think this is, this is a good candidate for next time, but we can see here in this Geeks for Geeks code that, um, they defined an actual function here where they take in an array. An an array. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the idea here is that N is what? Can you tell what N stands for here? Mm. It's a convention too. N is, is conventional. You should know it oh, is something. The, uh, the biggest number or like the size? It's the size. Okay. You yeah. know it's a number because it's convention to use N in the context of arrays. Usually you might say like, if it's a two dimensional array, it might be M by N. Okay. Uh, but in this case, it's N which refers to number, the number of items in this array. Right. Um, and that's just a convention. You're not required to call it N and you're also not required to have a function. This is a function that's not necessary, but it's convenient to have a function. So, you know, just walking you through this function, would you like to try and read out this function or would you like me to? Um, okay, public static integer. They're creating an array of integers. That's correct. And then it says, 
they're going to add X. Um, so to the array? size. Yeah, yes. no X. So integer N. So that means your size, like if it's six or seven. And then the next, you know, after the comma, they're declaring that N is for an integer. And then the, after the comma, the next integer for X is what is going in the array. Correct. That's the new that's, number that's right. going to come to the array. And, and it'll be like N number of X's in the array. N number of X's? Right. I'm not sure what the N number of X's are. Oh, so it'll be like six integers, which are the X integer. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Okay. We'll go on. <laughs> so you said you're going to insert X's, but we're not inserting X's. We're only going to no, insert one number, which we're passing in as the parameter X. Right. That's a better way to say it. Also, there's only one X. And you said, I heard, I heard plural. So I, I just want to oh, make sure. Oh, but that's as it's looping. So like. Right, right. But you notice that there's no X inside of the loop. So oh, let, me, okay. let, let me walk us through it real quick. So this is, as they say here, the comment, this is a function to add X, they say in array, but we usually say to the array. Okay. We define some memory called I. What is this for? We'll, we'll find out later. We don't know just yet what they're using I for because it's not clear right here, but it's convention. Mm -hmm. Not sure if it's the best convention, but it's convention to use I at least. Then we define this new array. This is gonna be our new array with the new element added to it. We define it with the new size. So the old array was of length n, so it goes to stand if we're adding one more item, the new size will be n plus one. It'll be one longer. Now we're saying we can go through this, the old a loop, the old array, and move those items over. And this is where you can see the traditional for loop, for some reason, right. they left the int i outside. Now, why would they do that? There might have been some sort of benefit, but in this case, I don't believe i was used anywhere else. So I just think they were, you know, for some reason, deciding to um, break up the, tr the, they could have just said int i down here, and that would have been perfectly fine. It might be some sort of advanced memory saving technique, you know, like, mm -hmm. but um, I don't think it, there's any special advantage to my knowledge for having int ID outside. So we go through this, this for loop, we move all the old items over. This is our old array, and it moves each item into the new array, one by one. Okay. Then lastly, we're going to move x into the last index. We know that n being the size of the new array, will also be the last element. Last, the last because element, it's, okay. It's, it should be the right, um, the size of the n being the size of the old array. Right. That number, if it's length six, think about it. If we use six, which was the length of the old array, as an index number now, it would be the new last index number. And we haven't. Quick yeah, we wouldn't here. really make it any quick check here bigger. for for a length six array. What number is the last index? Uh, five. That's correct. Zero, one, That's two, three, correct. Four, five. So if we had an array of length six and we added one to it, we'd be adding uh, to the index six. So that's what we're doing down here. This last line we'd be adding to index six. And then you could just pass back out of this function. You know, we could just go ahead and take this code. Yeah. It's good code. It's not bad code, but also like I would change it just for my own personal happiness because um, I like using the conventional for loop. And no, right. th there might be a good reason not to, but unless I know the reason why, I, you know, I'm not going to change it up, not knowing why.
So I'll just leave it like that, like the traditional okay. structure. And so let's try use this, this um, add X. I'm gonna try and use this add X function on our numbers two array. So I'm gonna say um, numbers two is the result of add X where we will pass in, let's look at our, uh, just by hovering my mouse over the function here in Replit, I can actually see what the function signature is and the right. parameters. So first we're gonna uh, pass an N. What should N be for numbers two? Oh, um, numbers two is there's, N is, um, it's well three. That's correct. But, yeah. So this one is relying on the programmer to do the work. There might be okay. a nicer way to do this, but for now, let's just follow the contract. Next, we're going to pass in the array that we want to modify. What is that called? Numbers two. That's correct. This is like a quiz show. Yeah. Uh... All right. It's not happy with that yet just because we're missing one more. One more. So let's see if it'll tell me. Yep. And what is int x supposed to be? What we want to add to it. Mm -hmm. What number would you like to add to our numbers to list? Um, um, array. Sorry, it's an array. Okay, four, I guess. We're going to add the number four. Okay, so let's, uh, we're going to print out, let's say here, um, just do a system dot out dot print line of like a little like I just want a little bit of like a visual break mm -hmm. um, so on one line we'll see two four six as it's printed already and then on the next line we should see I'm going to print out all the numbers inside numbers two again just copy and paste that code we should see now what uh two four six four mm -hmm. oops that's right can you help me find the error uh system out plan did you forget a semicolon nope nope look at the error message what oh error i message? see you typed instead of system you on line 49 you change your n to an m Mm -hmm. And it's not just 49, but that is correct. I, oh, and 43, because you copy and pasted it. And exactly. And it says so here that it was on two different lines. It's lines, very, okay. It's amazing and that the, the compiler here will catch not just the first error, but multiple of them. So yeah, sometimes it just stops at the first one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got I... those code fences. Those code fences are not perfectly Oh, yeah, I see. So at first we had 246, and now we have 2464. So Oops. we did indeed add something to it. Yeah. A trick question. If I wanted my second fence to be on its own line, how could I get it to be on its own line? Um, these, these dashes here? Yeah. What, uh, what at the end of uh, somewhere you put a back in well you could try it inside the there inside the quotes you could do a backslash n okay let me give that a run and see, see what happens works. voila Perfect. Okay, so you you have mastered the new line backslash okay. followed by N, where it's actually you can see here it's not quite red. It's you, know, you have to have good color sensitivity for that. But yeah. regular string text is red, like a dark red here. But and the other is pink. The special lighter. characters exactly. There's kind of like a, a pinkish red, light lighter color. So cool. Okay. So we were able to successfully using this new add X function. We were able to successfully add the number four. Um, it required us to know the length of our um, array, though. array yeah. first. And that's 
that might be something that's just an inherent thing to Java, or it might be um, something we could change. Like we might be able to like dynamically ask numbers two, what is your length, you know? Okay. Like, could we do something like this? Oops, I pasted the wrong thing here. Um, let's say I'm gonna do this, you know, length. Would that work? Cannot invoke length on array type int. Okay. Yeah. So why is that the case? Maybe it needs to be a property, not, right. not a function. Let's just see if we can do that and that works. It seems to work. So oh, okay. it might be the case that you can dynamically ask in Java the length, you know, where this in this case, it's, it's we're asking for the property or the attribute of the array. So like, for example, where we're doing this um, for loop here, right, instead of writing six, I could maybe instead do numbers dot length, and then we would be getting dynamically the values. Let me try running this and just make sure that this code doesn't break and still works as we expected. Yeah, it still works perfectly. So okay. I like I like this dynamic usage of dot length more so than hard coding. We call it hard coding when you use an actual number or you could say like using magic numbers. This yeah. is not yeah. a magic number. This length belongs to numbers. We can actually understand that length is coming from numbers. Whereas if I put the number six, someone be, might be like, why six? Why not four? Why not 20? That's just an arbitrary number. But this is not supposed to be arbitrary. We're supposed to, in this case, I'm saying, I want to get all the numbers out of an array, but it presupposes that I actually knew the length and I don't necessarily know the length. Okay. As the human programmer, right? So I feel like we did a pretty good initial a foray into arrays in Java. I, I think so. And I'd like to take a break here. Um, but we did clear our last, um, this wasn't like the only way to do it. This wasn't necessarily um, the simplest way to do it, but we did indeed pass an array as an argument where we made numbers two on line 42 the array numbers two, and then we passed it as a as an argument um, on line forty eight to the addx function, right? Or method, you could say. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the video here unless you want to say last thing. Any any last words? No, that's good. And oh, let me let, let me, me stop digest the this. And you we'll got talk, it. We'll talk later. I'm I'm stopping the recording. Here we